In this lesson, you will be learning all about the calculus of rainbows. You will see how the basic laws of optics, raindrops, and light rays combine to project these magical bands of colors which we often see in our sky. So, let's begin. Fermat's principle of optics states that light travels between two points along the path that requires the least time, as compared to by nearby other paths. This understanding can be applied to derive the law of reflection and the law of refraction, or often known as Schnell's law. I will show you this in the next slide. First, let's describe what refraction is. Refraction is essentially the bending of light. It occurs when light moves from one medium into another, both with different densities. This change in density will change the angle which the light ray travels at, and therefore cause the ray to bend. Schnell's law describes just this. To derive Snell's law, let's start by drawing a diagram such as this. The hypotenuse, or in this case distance, can be found by using the Pythagorean theorem. Then, because light always travels at a constant speed, you can use the formula time equals distance divided by velocity to get the equation for the total time. Because of Fermat's principle, we know that light takes the shortest path. So we have to find the minimum of this equation. We do this by setting the derivative equal to zero. After solving for the derivative, your equation should look like this. From looking at our first diagram, you will notice how the derivative just equals sine of alpha over sine of beta. From here, we can simplify our equation. Knowing the equation, velocity equals the speed of light divided by n, the refractive index, we can simplify our equation even more to look like this, Schnell's law. So you see, with knowing Fermat's principle, some geometry, and some calculus, we can easily derive Schnell's law. Another important concept to understand is the law of reflection, which states that the angle of instance is equal to the angle of reflection, as you can see in the diagram below. Now let's talk about how rainbows are actually formed. Rainbows are created when raindrops scatter sunlight. Both refraction and reflection are involved, and the many raindrops create a projection of the spectrum of colors in the sky. Let's look at what happens within an individual raindrop. When white light from the sun hits a raindrop, the change in density causes for the light to be refracted. However, because the white light is composed of all the different wavelengths of light, they all get refracted at slightly different angles. Then, the light rays hit the back of the raindrop where reflection takes place, and as the light leaves the raindrop, refraction occurs one more time. As you can see in the diagram, violet has the shortest wavelength. Therefore, because the ray travels by a greater slope, it gets refracted at a larger angle. Contrarily, red light has the longest wavelength, and therefore gets refracted at a smaller angle. So, just to go over it one more time. When sunlight hits a raindrop, all the different wavelengths get refracted at slightly different angles. Then, those light rays are reflected off the back of the raindrop. And finally, they are refracted as they leave the raindrop, with violet light being at the greatest angle, and red light being at the least. Now let's talk about the math that goes on inside a raindrop. When you accumulate all the angles within a raindrop due to refraction and reflection, and also the refractive index for each specific wavelength in water, you are able to calculate the exact angle which an observer can follow to find a rainbow, known as the rainbow angle. To find the rainbow angle, we first need to look at the angle of deviation, or d of alpha. We can form an equation for d of alpha by summing up all three of the rotations in the raindrop. The equation looks like this. Now we need to find the minimum for d of alpha. We do this by setting d prime of alpha equal to zero. But in order to solve for alpha, we need to have the derivative in terms of alpha. Basically, we need to get rid of beta prime. To get it in terms of alpha, let's first look at Snell's law. Note how I'm using k instead of n as the refractive index. Then you need to take the derivative of Snell's law and write it equal to beta prime you get beta prime equals cos of alpha divided by k times cos of beta. Let's call this equation number one. Now let's look at Snell's law once more. This time you're gonna square both sides and set it equal to sine squared of beta. So you get sine squared of beta equals sine squared of alpha divided by k squared. Let's call this equation number two. Now let's look at this trig identity, where cos squared of beta plus sine squared of beta equals one. And let's set it equal to cos of beta where cos of beta equals the square root of one take away sine squared of beta. Let's call this equation number three. Now let's go back to equations number three and number two. 
we can sub number two into number three to form a new equation, which equals cos of beta. Now with our new equation in equation number one, we are able to write beta prime in terms of alpha. We're almost there. By subbing in our beta prime, we can write d prime of alpha in terms of alpha. The next step is to set it equal to zero and solve for alpha. You need to rearrange your equation so that you can solve for alpha. In terms of the refractive index, I chose its value for red light because red is at the top of the rainbow. This allows us to calculate for the maximum angle. So when you solve for alpha, you get around 59.5 degrees. Now, our last step is to plug that 59.5 degrees into our original equation, d of alpha. But there is one problem. We still have a beta in that equation. To get rid of the beta, let's use Snell's law one more time and set it equal to beta. We finally have our d of alpha in terms of alpha. And when we plug the 59.5 degrees in, the minimum angle of deviation is about 138 degrees. Note, you have to convert the 59.5 degrees into radians to plug it into your equation, then convert it back to degrees. Now to find our rainbow angle, you just need to subtract 138 from 180 and you will get 42 degrees. This means that the maximum height a rainbow can be in the sky and the maximum angle the sun can have with the horizon is 42 degrees. If the sun is any higher, then the rainbow will be essentially below the horizon and not visible. So, with the understanding that the sun rays and the projected rays always make an angle of 42 degrees, you can determine the angle to gaze at to find a rainbow in the sky based on the angle theta that the sun makes with the horizon. All you have to do is subtract theta from 42 to get the angle which the observer needs to look at. So now let's look at a couple of scenarios. What angle would the observer need to look at to find the rainbow if the sun was setting? Therefore, theta equals zero. Well, 42 minus zero equals 42. Therefore, the observer would need to look at a 42 degree angle in order to find the rainbow. This is the greatest height you could see a rainbow. What angle would the observer need to look at if the sun was at a 45 degree angle with the horizon? Well, if you subtract 45 from 42, you end up with a negative number. This means that the rainbow would not be visible because essentially it is being projected below the horizon. In order to see a rainbow, the sun needs to be 42 degrees or less with the horizon. So now let's talk about why a rainbow appears as a band of colors. Well, each wavelength has a different refractive index in water. Therefore, each color will have a slightly different angle of deviation and will make different angles with the sun rays. We found the angle being 42 degrees for red light, but as you calculate the angles for all the different colors using their specific refractive index, you will notice that they are all smaller than 42 degrees. Violet light makes the smallest angle with the sun rays. It's about 40 degrees. When we go back to our definition of refraction, we know that the light is being bent. From each individual raindrop, you are seeing a specific color being bent relative to the angle you are looking at and the angle that each color makes with the sun rays. In this diagram, you can see how the refraction of light from multiple raindrops is perceived by the observer. From the observer's perspective, the refraction of light from the many raindrops in the sky and the specific angles which each color makes with the sun rays appears as a band of colors arcing in the sky. The different angles which each color makes with the sun rays is why the order of a rainbow is Roji Biv from longest wavelength to shortest wavelength. Have you ever seen a double rainbow before? Well, the rainbow we normally see is called a primary rainbow. However, a secondary rainbow can form if the conditions are just right. It appears as a fainter rainbow just above the primary rainbow with the order of colors reversed, with red on the inner side of the arc. A secondary rainbow is formed when reflection occurs twice inside the raindrop. As you can see in the diagram, the ray from the sun is refracted at A, then reflected at both B and C, then refracted again at D where it goes to the observer. Because now there are four rotations in the raindrop, the math which we previously did to find the rainbow angle will slightly change because the relationship of the ray from the sun and the ray to the observer is different. You can see this new relationship in the diagram. So if you were to calculate for the rainbow angle of the secondary rainbow, then it would be about 51 degrees. Because 51 degrees is a stronger angle than 42 degrees, the secondary rainbow will be above the primary rainbow. 
Now let's talk about why the colors are reversed in a secondary rainbow. Well, the double refraction inside the raindrop reverses the order which the colors lead the raindrop. Red is still refracted at the least angle, and violet is still refracted at the most, but because of that extra reflection, the observer now sees violet at the top of the arc and red at the bottom. So, if you are lucky and see a double rainbow, then just remember that within the raindrops, reflection occurs two times. This is why the second rainbow is observed at a stronger angle and why its colors are reversed. You've reached the end of the lesson. I hope you enjoyed learning all about the calculus and physics behind rainbows. Thank you so much for listening.